Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The Galaxy of Intellectual, Your Excellency, invited guests, teachers, and my dear friends. On behalf of GTN Institution, I, Sumit Sarvade, Assistant Professor, the Galaxy of Intellectual, Your Excellency, Department of Forensic Science, and host for today's webinar, welcomes you in the fourth day of. international webinar series on forensic science for society i thank you all of you for joining this webinar focusing on topic graphology for personality assessment and development we feel honor to have with us mr paresh chitnis director paresh chitnis academy practicing graphologist and forensic document examiner Nashik, Maharashtra, India. The speaker of today's webinar, sir. You hardly need any introduction. You have made us all of us proud by your distinguished work in numerous capacities in field of forensic document examination and graphology. Paresh sir is an MBA in HR from University of Pune, Maharashtra, and has worked in some of the. India's best companies like Forbes, Cipla, and Camlin, to name a few. He helps organization for understanding organizational development using graphology and handwriting analysis. Paresh sir has also helped companies design their business logos according to Corel analysis and graphology. Sir has acquired counseling skills like transactional analysis and rational emotive behavior therapy. He has a vast experience of consulting and counseling people for various issue related to career, education, business, and relationships or families. Sir has completed M.Sc. in Chemistry from University of Pune and P.G. Diploma in Forensic Science from Government Institute of Forensic Science, Aurangabad. He is a government certified forensic document examiner and has given expert opinion for. Many cases in lower courts and higher courts. Paresh Chitni sir can help you to understand yourself and your close one just by looking at your handwriting and signature. He guides you for bringing transformation in your life in the areas of health, wealth, and relationships. Sir has helped numerous people from different walks of life to identify their strength and weakness. He is the pioneer of transformative graphology and has been promoting graphology for. last 12 years i request everyone please ask your doubts by typing the message on the screen at the end of session and not in the middle of the session hope you will gain the knowledge and enjoy the session so without any delay i request sir to start the session good morning all of you thank you uh, sumit for uh, uh, the introduction uh, and i am so glad to be here i am uh, very happy to see so many participants early in the morning in india and uh, so many participants from outside india participating for this uh, uh, four day conference webinar conference uh, today being the last uh, day uh, of the conference i uh, hope you enjoy this i am not going to be very technical in this uh, seminar or webinar i am not going to speak a lot about forensics uh, because uh, that's uh, something very specific only for your department the host department uh, but we will be discussing something about uh, and writing analysis that how it can be used for personality assessment at the onset i would uh, like to take this opportunity to thank uh, the gtn organization and all the organizers of uh, this webinar conference for inviting me for uh, this uh, speech today uh, especially uh, many thanks to uh, your director uh, sir mr durai uh, your sec uh, the secretary and the correspondent uh, coordinator uh, lion uh, dr k uh, retinal principal dr t bala uh, guru swami uh, vice principal Dr. professor u natrajan uh, uh, your academic director n martin nil Uh, and all the uh, eminent uh, professors and lecturers and all dear students who are present here i thank you for 
giving me this opportunity to interact with you and uh, share uh, my uh, experience of hand writing analysis with you, which can help you uh, and your students for uh, their personal development and understanding themselves. So uh, here I begin uh, with this uh, webinar. Uh, if uh, Sumit, if uh, you have issue hearing me, if you have an issue hearing me, please uh, let me know uh, on chat or just uh, uh, you may just interrupt me and let me know that I am not audible if that is so. So uh, this this whole session is about knowing yourself and uh, I can see uh, more than uh, just around 300 people in the seminar. Uh, I have something for you. If you stay till the end of this webinar, uh, that's generally what I uh, Okay, offer. sir. No problem. We will unmute them, sir. No. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, to begin with, I thank all of you for being here. Okay, sir. Uh, you can go ahead, sir. Yeah. So, I thank all of you for being here. Uh, I have something for you at the end of the webinar, so uh, stay along and enjoy this webinar till the end. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, something about me and what I do, I conduct a lot of training programs. Uh, there are various programs that I conduct in India and abroad. Uh, this is a program that I conduct in India and UAE. These are my numbers. If you want, you can just take a photograph of this. Uh, I uh, do a lot of uh, open programs and webinars for uh, various groups. So this is my India number and my UAE number. You can contact me on these numbers. Uh, I also conduct some programs, uh, some of them in Marathi and Hindi, uh, one called as Akshare Santi Sabha. I'm a trainer and a graphologist for the last 13 years. I've been training graphology to uh, many people who have used it in various fields. Uh, I conduct infotainment programs. Info uh, infotainment programs are mix of entertainment and information which can be helpful for people to understand themselves in a lighter way. So there are, uh, these programs are conducted for various audiences and uh, of various age groups starting from children to parents to old people to youngsters like most of you uh, and to uh, faculties and company uh, employees. These programs are also conducted for doctors who use this for their, uh, to understand their, uh, their patients. We also work in, closely in association with the Nasik Police and the Maharashtra Police. Uh, and uh, I have written a lot of uh, articles in uh, related to forensics and especially digital forensics and cyber forensics also. Uh, that is one of my areas of work. Uh, there, there have been various recognitions of the work that uh, I have been doing and uh, I have also presented uh, some research uh, at uh, organizations like IIT Kanpur, IIT Mumbai in the recent past. Uh, I had uh, the privilege of working with the Indian Army for trainings at, uh, uh, in Maharashtra, at Devlali and in Nagar. Uh, so uh, this has been a very good experience that we have trained uh, officers of the level of uh, colonels, uh, where they use this for uh, their uh, confidential analysis of their staff and sometimes uh, of some suspects. So I have also uh, presented graphology at uh, the literature festival recently, uh, two years back. Uh, there have been a lot of programs that we have conducted for children of various age groups, especially uh, school children and college children uh, and also these programs have been conducted for uh, women for their uh, well-being and their development. So uh, for students this has been very helpful and I hope today's uh, webinar uh, is helpful for the teachers and students who are here today. Uh, these training programs uh, are conducted in uh, Maharashtra as well as uh, uh, outside Maharashtra. Uh, we do a lot of uh, consulting, counseling, uh, we do family counseling, one-to-one -one counseling, where we help people to understand themselves and each other so that their 
they can develop themselves and have a happier uh, personal and professional life. A uh, lot of people uh, take these services. One of the recent uh, success stories that we had was of uh, Gayatri Pawaskar, who is a, a rifle shooter. Who, uh, who I was uh, mentoring her, and uh, uh, she could uh, back a gold medal at the national level. And now she is preparing for Olympics 2020, which has now become Olympics 2021, which will be happening in the next year now due to COVID uh, in Tokyo. So, uh, I am still uh, guiding them, coaching uh, these two sisters uh, uh, presently uh, through internet and webinar, just like uh, what we are having. So, uh, consulting is still uh, possible in this period, and uh, people are taking benefit of uh, and writing analysis. And this is how and writing analysis can be used for helping people to understand themselves and progress in their uh, respective fields. Uh, this is used with children, uh, not only in India, we are also operating in various countries like Ghana, Africa and conducting programs for children. The, the programs which can be conducted for a 5 year old can also be useful for a 50 year old person. That's the beauty. Uh, these are the school programs that we conduct. These are the programs for the, uh, the army training uh, kids uh, who undergo training programs at the uh, military schools. Uh, we also do a lot of public awareness program. This, uh, uh, why I am sharing this is you can understand where you can use and writing analysis if you choose to make it as a career or a hobby. So uh, this can be used for corporate trainings and this is used uh, on a large scale at organizations. Our clients include problem dreams. Uh, we also give a lot of uh, uh, analysis and training programs for Bosch, Mahindra and Mahindra and many other organizations. So uh, these are the various training programs. I get the privilege to meet a lot of uh, people who on the screen play the role of forensic experts. Like uh, this one is Detective Asmita and this you might be knowing. Uh, ACP Padyum who actually is uh, the actor Shivani Satan. And uh, we help them uh, to uh, for also for uh, giving ideas about what actually is the life of a forensic expert and what kind of uh, Cases we handle, so that that becomes a help for them for writing scripts. Uh, I have uh, the privilege of meeting a lot of business owners, and a uh, uh, lot of business owners uh, use this uh, for their development. I also had an opportunity to interact with Kumar uh, Mangalam uh, Birlaji on this topic of writing analysis. So uh, this was my uh, uh, introduction about. The work that I do, uh, I'll be uh, sharing more about what we do exactly. Uh, coming to uh, the topic of your interest, that how you can know yourself from writing analysis and how and writing analysis can help you to understand yourself. I'm not going into the science of how it works. Just to give you a brief, that handwriting is an outcome not of your hand but of your brain. Because if I ask you to write something. Your focus is on the content. When you are writing, your focus is on the content and the writing just happens. So who is writing? Who decides the size, the slant uh, of the writing, the spacing between the words, the pressure that you are uh, putting in the writing? You are not aware of it, but it's you who is taking these decisions. So handwriting is a subconscious activity where you are not aware of uh, what decisions you are taking while writing. but it's you who's taking those decisions and that is the reason why and writing reveals all those things that you do unconsciously, subconscious. Subconscious is, uh, subconscious activity is any activity where uh, you are not aware that you are doing it but you can always be aware of it. Like while you are driving, you are applying brakes, you are uh, accelerating. So many times you are not aware of it but if you want, you can be aware of it. The moment you feel that there is a problem in the vehicle, you become aware of. So, uh, subconscious activity is something that you can be aware of it, but you rather don't choose to be aware of it. So, uh, similarly, many things, many decisions in our life we take are subconsciously taken, and uh, that exactly is what is seen in the handwriting as a graph. So, your handwriting is a graph of the thinking that is happening in the brain because all these decisions are taken by your brain. It's not the handwriting actually, it's the brain that is writing. 
and your thumb has a lot of control. Uh, your thumb has been allocated a lot of uh, space in your brain, just like a computer is uh, uh, compartmentalized as drives. Your brain uh, has some compartments and some space is allocated to every organ. And uh, in the brain, there's a lot of space allocated to the thumb. So comparing the size of the physical size of the thumb, the space allocated for the thumb is much, much larger. So, uh, in, uh, in, the, uh, in Greece, uh, you see the reminiscence of the ancient Greek uh, temples. This, this is a Apollo temple in Greece and uh, the words that are written on uh, the uh, wall or the entrance of the temple are know thyself. Know thyself means know yourself. Now, uh, this has been mentioned by Socrates 23,000 uh, years back, but he doesn't mention how to know yourself. He just mentions that the most important thing is to know yourself. Now, it's a puzzle, it's a riddle, how to know yourself. The temple wall has this engraved, know thyself, but we don't know how to know thyself. Now, handwriting analysis is something that is going to help you because the education system that we have gone through has developed us. We have been developed or we have been carved out by the education that we have taken. So education has contributed a lot in our personality, but now we don't know how to actually know ourselves. There's no tool that has been given to us to know ourselves. We have all the analytical tools to understand the markets, understand the body, understand uh, so many things, but we have not been taught anywhere how to know yourself. So knowing yourself is the most important thing as Socrates says, but the education system somewhere didn't find time to teach us how to know ourselves. So uh, this is a tool and writing analysis is a tool to know ourselves. Now what are the advantages of knowing ourselves? Let's understand that. When we say that we need to know ourselves, what exactly are we talking about? We need to understand our emotions and psychology today is more focused on the emo emotional intelligence and positive psychology. The earlier years of psychology were about studying people who were abnormal, showed abnormal psychology and that was the basis of understanding normal people based on the theories developed by observing abnormal people. Now that we have evolved and now that psychology has moved much ahead from Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung, now we are studying uh, positive psychology and we are studying emotional intelligence. What we understand is understanding ourselves is the most important thing. Uh, understanding our emotions will help us next to understand somebody else's emotions. So understanding our own emotions is very important. Uh, so, uh, handwriting analysis is going to help you to understand your own emotions and understand somebody else's emotions. So, uh, when you uh, use handwriting analysis to understand yourself, the fact that you are observing yourself, that itself helps you to uh, bring about positive changes in yourself. So, uh, we have uh, uh, seen that in, in a lot of uh, scriptures and in a lot of books, uh, the mind is compared with a monkey which is always restless. So when you give the monkey a task, it becomes, uh, it becomes uh, calm and then you can tame it. So uh, the task that uh, we need to give this monkey is to observe itself. So handwriting analysis helps you to observe yourself and by observing yourself, that itself helps you to develop and uh, create a new personality. And uh, there are no actually, there are no uh, ways of measuring your personality. Uh, some tools and techniques like psych psychometric analysis and aptitude tests are there, but which are not so easily accessible to a layman. So we need to have some tool which will help us to measure our personality. And if we can measure something, we can develop it and we can change it. Now we are. Uh, compared to a painting and you are also compared to the artist who is painting. So you are creating your painting for yourself. You are the artist of your personality and you are the outcome of the work that you are doing. So 
developing a personality is an art and the outcome is you yourself so that is the beauty of personality development and handwriting analysis is going to help us in developing this personality for ourselves so what do we do with handwriting analysis we are involved in helping people to understand themselves and others by providing them handwriting analysis and signature analysis we also teach handwriting and signature analysis and we provide franchises to do the above things these are the opportunities for you if you want to get into this as a uh, career and we are also available uh, to you for these services many of these services are available on internet and you can watch a lot of videos that i have uploaded on uh, youtube and other places where you can learn basic graphology uh, for no charges and for, for very non nominal charges uh, how does handwriting analysis help you in personality development you can create what is not there in your personality so you can create what is not there you can create the personality traits that you feel are important you can eliminate uh, what you feel is not required in your personality and you can preserve what is good in your personality the things that are good in your personality need to be preserved things that are missing in your personality and crucial for your success in your field can be eliminated and things which are limiting your success or being an obstruction in your development can be eliminated and things that you feel cannot change in you need to be accepted so handwriting analysis is going to help you in creating accepting preserving and eliminating this can be useful for students children parents couples teachers counselors sport personalities this can also be useful for business owners uh company owners ceos and employees so uh, what if i tell you that that uh you can discover your personality traits and develop yourself using handwriting analysis even today will you be interested you can just write yes if you are interested to know yourself uh in the chat box so that we can proceed yeah i can see a lot of people saying yes thank you so much and now we'll be uh, delving into uh, and writing analysis and understanding what and writing analysis uh, can do for us what are the simple things that can help us to uh, understand ourselves if you are sitting with a paper and a pen uh, or a notebook that on which you have already written something uh i would suggest you to keep your hand writing in front of your eyes so that you can immediately check things in your writing so if you find something that i am going to speak in this uh, webinar in the next uh few 15 minutes if you find some things which are there which i mentioned are not very good for your development look at it uh, not as a negative thing but an opportunity for yourself to develop yourself okay that is an opportunity you could find something where you can work on yourself so that is the possibility of creating a new future for yourself and if you find something that i uh, mention be very good for your personality be happy that you already have those things in your personality okay so let us move ahead to understand uh, some small things that are important in your handwriting now handwriting is nothing but dots lines curves and loops so let us look at the important aspects can you correct this what is missing can you uh, write in the chat box what is missing here yes tanya says dots sonita says dots yes sujit ji it's the i dots yes sujit yes the i dots yeah so uh, yes vanishta yes yes devika it's i dot you are right yes chirag right so yeah you could spot it bang on it is the i dots which are missing but what is the meaning of the i dots and can you correct them now here is the most important part if i ask you to put these dots in the word initiative there are four i's in this and you have to put the i dots to this uh, uh, word if i ask you to 
put the i dots without without looking at this word how about if we put a, a clock on your eyes if you are blindfolded will you be able to put the i dots at the right place certainly not the dots will go at the wrong places you might end up putting one of those uh, at the right place but that would just be by chance so what does that mean to put the i dot at the right place it is required that you pay attention to the word you cannot put the i dot in place without looking at it so if you look at your handwriting now and you find that all the i dots are at the right place it means that you were attentive while writing the dots will be in the right place only if you have been attentive while writing so if you are attentive and you are giving uh, attention to the details while writing your i dots will be at the right place if the i dots are not at the right place it means that you are in a hurry and you put the dots at the wrong places you randomly place the dots somewhere or maybe you missed one or two dots and uh, you just move ahead without putting some dots so if the dots are not well placed it shows that you are not focused it shows that you cannot pay attention your concentration is lacking but if those dots are placed at the right place every time then it shows that you are attentive and you have good concentration so we assume that the person who is attentive while writing towards the writing would be attentive towards the studies while studying and will be attentive towards the movie while watching the group that is also important so there is no point worrying about your studies while you are watching a movie and there is no point thinking about the movie while you are studying so when your dots are in place it shows that you are attentive what you have is concentration detail orientation focus and attention so simply by placing the dots at the right place every time can improve your concentration that is the power of graphic therapy now is this magic no it is not magic in one uh, scenario of writing you are making yourself be concentrated and detail oriented now this habit of being concent uh, concentrating on the uh, writing while writing and being detail oriented focused and attentive while writing is going to help you to do all your tasks with attention precision and focus so handwriting can be a tool or means to improve your concentration by just placing all the i dots at the right place every time that is going to help you to improve your concentration detail orientation focus attention now these things are important not only in studies they are important in your research they are important in quality control they are in important when you are in positions where you have to be attentive towards minutest details you are uh, working in areas where uh, it can cost you if you are less attentive or if you just uh, are not concentrating on your work uh, this is also important where you are working in areas which can be life threatening if you are not attentive or focused so these things can help you a lot just by putting the dots at the right place in the right way can help you to improve your concentration detail orientation focus and attention now a little bit more about the i dots when you are putting this i dot for the lower case i or letter j the dot has to be in the right place no doubt just like what we saw but it also has to be put in the right way now what is the right way let us look at the wrong way first so that we understand the right way so some people tend to put a dot like a slash which goes ahead this way or goes slashing backwards or maybe sometimes goes slashing upwards or sometimes slashing downwards like this so if if your uh, eyes are slashing like this uh, it it would be uh, showing a lot of irritation and anger whereas uh, if you uh, put the i dot properly uh, it will help you uh, to uh, improve your concentration be more attentive and also reduce your stress so this helps you to reduce your stress uh, this is the right way and this is not a very right way of writing i dots uh irritation and blaming will happen if you have those slashes in the writing like this 
this slashes in the idons you can check in your writing if you have lot of slashes look at it as an opportunity to improve yourself and your personality by being more responsible for yourself and you have an opportunity and possibility of growth if you change those slashes into dots so irritation and blaming can be reduced and growth can be achieved just by making the dots uh, in the right way just by making the dots like lot dots and not like slashes can you read this what is the sentence no most of you know that uh, what it, it is supposed to be right it's supposed to be it's supposed to be time is money but what is it looking like what does it look like it's looking like line is money right yeah nisha is saying it's time is money anybody has any different opinion oh tanya pal says it's line is money yeah goro saying line are you saying line it's looking it's looking like line is money yes rahul yes dr samson it's time is money so we have a different opinion about this sentence yes i understand some people are looking at it as what it is uh, in front of their eyes as it appears that is line is money and some people are understanding and uh, uh, intellectual who realize that there can be a mistake by the person who has written so this might be time is money oh this is what parish wanted to say wanted to say time is money but he forgot to put something and so he wrote line is money so what did what did i miss here i missed something okay so uh, it's it's so uh, nice of you that uh, uh, you could uh, you could read it uh, as uh, time is money yeah uh, so uh, a lot of people are saying the crossbar of t shilpa says crossbar um ayush is saying the crossbar bar of t somebody with the name redmi हेलो 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 कैन यू हियर मी कैन यू हियर मी या एंड कैन यू सी माय स्क्रीन ओके आई होप यू कैन सी माय स्क्रीन टू या 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 सर यस सर यस सर yeah thank you uh, thank you sumit uh, there was a power failure here so we had some disruption uh, sorry for that uh, let me please continue so we are talking about this line is money time is money confusion and the confusion as you rightly mentioned is because of this missing crossbar so what is exactly missing here is the crossbar and the crossbar is something that completes the letter so crossbar is something which completes the letter so what is the meaning of the crossbar the crossbar is for completion the crossbar completes whatever uh, you have started so if if i uh, if i write something and uh, if i don't complete it what's going to happen is uh, it will remain incomplete and there is going to be confusion so what i created uh, by not putting the crossbar was a confusion for all of you and uh, keeping things incomplete creates confusion in the minds of others 
So similarly, if you don't complete whatever you have committed, is going to create confusion in the minds of others. So your personality will uh, be a confused personality for others if your crossbars are missing or your crossbars are weak. So uh, crossbars are very important in the handwriting. And uh, although you might be knowing about the dots and crosses in the handwriting, it's very important for uh, you to understand why it is so. So. Uh, Yep, okay. Can you read this uh, sentence? Now, this is, this is going to be a little more difficult. Just try reading this sentence. Can you make some sense out of this? Okay. So, uh, let me put the crossbars now. And it will be clearer. Mr. Lewis. Now, if you look at this, this becomes clear. So you, you will realize that the importance of the crossbar is to complete things and make it clear. So if you have the crossbars, things are clear. If you don't have the crossbar, the things are not clear as they should be. So uh, that is the importance of crossbars. Crossbars create clarity. If you have good crossbars in your handwriting, there is clarity. If you don't have good crossbars, there is no clarity in thoughts. There is no commitment. Now, I would like to uh, ask you to imagine something. Imagine something where uh, some situation where you didn't complete uh, what you were supposed to do. For example, your homework or some assignment everyone has gone through this situation sometimes in their life okay you were supposed to do some homework and you just simply forgot to complete your task or your assignment so what happened the moment you realize that everyone else has done their homework and you failed to do the homework you wanted to disappear from the classroom how, how is your feeling when you realize that uh, you haven't done your homework and your teacher is going to ask you for the homework. Uh, you start feeling uneasy. You feel like just getting disappeared. You feel like every second is like an hour. You feel like when would this class end and you just don't want your teacher to notice you. How is your confidence in such scenario? Your confidence is low and uh, you don't feel very positive about your own self. So uh, this uh, crossbar is just like that. It shows your confidence. It shows uh, how you feel about yourself. So crossbar is like completing something. Now imagine how you felt when you completed some homework when you have completed the assignment and you are in the classroom waiting for the teacher to enter the classroom and ask you have you completed the homework okay you are literally waiting for the professor for your teacher to ask you and you feeling that there he should notice you and ask you whether you have done the homework so what does that mean keeping things incomplete makes you feel down and less confident whereas completing small activities gives you confidence so from where do you gather your confidence? You have always gathered confidence whenever you have completed something. So the crossbar in your handwriting shows determination because you complete things. You complete whatever you start. So when you write that L, you have started. And when you put the crossbar, you have completed it. If you don't put the crossbar, line time becomes line. So completing what you start develops determination, sustenance, with power and confidence in your personality at the end. So in the long run, completing small tasks gives you a lot of confidence. So if you want to be confident, it's, it's not going to happen as a miracle someday. You have to keep on doing small activities and completing whatever are your responsibilities and you will start feeling more and more confident. And at the end, it will give you a lot of happiness. 
So if you want determination, sustenance, willpower, confidence and happiness in your life, what you need to do is complete whatever you have started. Don't keep any confusion, have clarity in your thinking and this can be done by exercising the crossbar in your handwriting. If you just put the crossbars in your handwriting each and every time, it's going to improve your determination, sustenance, willpower, confidence and give you a lot of happiness. Now, we saw that the crossbar has to be put in the right way. Okay, But there is a word of caution here. This is the right way of putting a crossbar. It has to be wide enough. But if you put the crossbar just like this and say that, yes, I put a crossbar. So it's like just going and sitting in the classroom and not paying attention, not doing the assignments, not completing your work. It's not going to help you. So a small crossbar, not a very wide crossbar is not very good, but a wide crossbar shows a lot of determination, a lot of confidence, a lot of willpower because it takes a lot of efforts and you are going to be successful by putting efforts at the right place. So you have to have good crossbars, that is wide crossbars, which can help you to be more confident. Small crossbars like this will give you less results. It will give you some confidence and you'll be a little doubtful about your confidence if you have small crossbars. Just look at your handwriting. If you have small crossbars, you have an opportunity to develop yourself and be a new you. Now, uh, sometimes uh, you might have a question that what if there are two T's which are consecutive like this. Can I put a common crossbar to two? Yes, that shows multitasking. If you put two crossbars, a uh, one crossbar to two T's, that is crossing two T's with one crossbar shows multitasking and which is a good thing to do. But never overdo something. You can cross two consecutive T's, but not to cross non-consecutive T's. T's which are not coming together should not be crossed together. The uh, crossing of two consecutive T's shows that the person is uh, efficient in multitasking. The person is doing two activities in one go. So what you have done is you have completed two things by putting a one crossbar that shows that you do multitasking. But when you are putting a common crossbar for non-consecutive T's, it shows hopelessness and lack of confidence instead of confidence. So this is overdoing. This, this shows that you are pretending to be confident by putting a very wide crossbar. So you don't need to be artificial. Too big crossbar doesn't, shows, doesn't show you too much of confidence. In fact, it shows the opposite. So anything done in excess, the opposite is true. Always remember this. Nothing should be done in excess. A wide crossbar is good, but a too wide crossbar is not very good. So avoid putting very wide crossbars like this. Non-consecutive keys should not be crossed together. But consecutive keys, wherever they are, take the opportunity to cross them together. Now, when we say that the crossbar is completing something, what are the activities you are thinking of completing? Whether it is the activity of the past, present or the future is important. Now, uh, we cannot imagine or visualize time. This is something interesting about our mind. We can imagine everything, but we cannot have uh, a way to imagine time. Okay, we cannot imagine time. It is a very relative thing to imagine. Like you cannot imagine one hour, but you can imagine one kilometer. You can imagine 12, 12 kilometers, 200 kilometers, 500 kilometers, but you cannot imagine uh, time. When I say 15 minutes, sometimes you know 15 minutes have been too long in your life and sometimes even hours have been too short. So uh, time cannot be visualized. Time cannot be imagined. Uh, the magnitude or the quantity of the time cannot be imagined. Okay. So um, we need to understand that how we visualize time. Uh, we have direction for time. So if I ask you to write a, a, a sequential list of what activities you did uh, yesterday, you would either write it from top to bottom, meaning the first activity that you did yesterday will come at the top, then the second, then the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, tenth. Or maybe you will write the activities from left to right, like the first activity, then the next, and then the next. 
So what it means is we look at time as a timeline and generally left is the past and right is the future. Okay, that is how you visualize the timeline. Okay, nobody has told you or taught you, but it is a common observation that we tend to imagine left as the past and right as the future. It's not what a graphologist is telling you, but that is what we generally do. And so we use the same imagination or the same as a basis for considering time in the handwriting that left is past and right is future. So when you cross the bar, when you put a crossbar to the T, you are completing something that is in front of you in the present moment. But when you are putting a crossbar on the left, now you can go back to your handwriting to check whether some of the T's, most of the T's or all of the T's are crossed at the stem, right place, or whether some of them are going on the left or the right. If the T crossbars are going on the right, left, it shows that you are procrastinating. Procrastination is uh, putting things uh, on tomorrow that you are supposed to do today and prolonging them, just avoiding doing things. So if the crossbar is on the left, you are yet to complete some things that you should have been completing in the past. So left side is for the past. So what you have to complete yet is the things of the past. Okay. So that is procrastination. That is putting things off and keeping them at the back burner as long as possible. Not doing things which are important and urgent, but doing things which are not important and not urgent. So a procrastinator is not inefficient. The procrastinator is actually someone who is efficient at doing things which are really not important at that moment and keeping things which are important pending for tomorrow. So if the crossbar is on the left side, as you see here, the person is procrastinating. He still has to complete things of the past. And if the crossbar is on the right side, this person is trying to be ahead of time. The person is having impatience. The person is being impatient. He has a lot of anxiety and he might take action before the right time. So a person who is putting a crossbar on the right side, he or she may be having a lot of anxiety and always worried to take action for the future. Just imagine if you want to read the newspaper of tomorrow, today, is it possible? You cannot read tomorrow's paper today. Okay, You will have to wait for tomorrow morning. Maybe at the earliest, early morning, you might get the newspaper, but you will have to wait for tomorrow. Now, if you try to take an action before its right time, you might land up in problem and people will misunderstand you and consider you to be restless and impatient. So T crossbars on the right side in your handwriting show a lot of impatience, anxiety and being restless to know the future and take actions before the right time. So if you see those kind of crossbars sometimes going on the left or sometimes on the right, you can just put them in place and you will get a lot of peace of mind because you will be able to handle things in the present and live in the present moment. And that is very important. Living in the present is very important thing. We just keep hearing about it, but we don't understand how to change ourselves to enjoy the present moment and be in the present moment. We try to do a lot of things, but we fail to be in the present moment. So this can be one way of many ways like meditation and mindfulness. One way of helping yourself to be in the present moment is crossing the T at the right place. This helps you to be in the present moment and reduce a lot of stress. This can also help elderly people or adults for uh, making their health better. Uh, anxiety can result into a lot of lifestyle related problems. Especially uh, T crossbars going on the right side are seen in people who are uh, in positions like head of the department, the principals, the managers, the CEOs of the companies. This is something which is very uh, commonly seen because they are in a position where they always have to think of the future and that becomes a part of their personality. Sometimes it can be harmful to the personality, useful for the organization, but maybe harmful for the person uh, as an individual and his or her health. So if you have T crossbar going on the right side or the left, just put them at the right place. Now the crossbar can be also placed vertically very low or very high. Which is the right place to put the crossbar? It's a little higher. 
you can put a crossbar higher because putting a crossbar higher is raising the bar and aiming high. So setting a high goal is very important and you can do that by putting the crossbar a little higher as you see on the right side. Don't put the crossbar very low, your aims will be very low and you will achieve them very quickly and will not understand what to do next. So if you, load, uh, you have a very low aim and you achieve that goal very fast in your life, then you have nothing to do in your life. So aim high, maybe aiming high is going to be helpful because when you set high goals and even if you fail, you will still be higher uh, in your success than others because you have aimed high and uh, tried much more than what you would have tried for yourself if you would have aimed low. So aim high, even if you fail, don't worry, your, your success will be higher than anybody else's success. So put a T crossbar very high, but there's a word of caution here again, don't exaggerate it. The crossbar should not go to the top and touch the tip of the T or go beyond it. It's not good. So put a crossbar high enough, but it should not go to the tip. It should be slightly below the uh, crossbars that you are seeing on the screen. These are not the right ways. This is exaggeration and this is overdoing something. Uh, this is being impractical and inviting uncertainty by aiming at something which is actually not possible for you. So we all understand our limitations and doing something which is beyond our limitation is aiming at something which is impractical and dreamy. Sometimes this causes a lot of issues and health problems and mental problems. So avoid this, don't put crossbars very high, but put them uh, well uh, at a high level. Now we looked at the upper part, let us look at the lower part of the writing. Some people tend to write a Y like this. It goes down and it stays down. For some, it just comes back up and reaches you. What it actually should be is something like this. Your Y should not just reach the baseline, but it should cross it and go above it well enough so that it gets completed. So when you take your uh, strokes down to make the G, J, Y, uh, it has to come back, especially the letters G, J and Y. When you go down in the lower zone, you have to come back in the middle zone, you have to come back above the baseline. Baseline is an imaginary line on which the writing seems to be based and you have to come back above it. If you are writing on a ruled paper, the lower zone loop should complete above the line on which you are writing. This is going to help you to succeed faster because this will help you to learn from your mistakes and you can avoid making the same mistakes again and again. This also generates a lot of trust uh, in yourself. This gives you confidence and trust in yourself. If you trust yourself, people might trust you. But if you don't trust yourself, certainly nobody is going to trust you. So the first thing that you need to do is trust yourself. And that can be achieved by making good lower zone loops, which are uh, wide enough, but not too inflated. And they should return back in the middle zone. That is the uh, area where you make the A's and O's. It has to come above the ruled line on which you are writing. Some things that you need to avoid is too much of scratching. Too much of scratching in the handwriting shows that you are irritated, easily irritable, you have a low frustration tolerance and you get stuck uh, somewhere very easily. Okay. So when you are cancelling something, uh, you should just cancel the word with one cross or maximum two scratch, uh, two lines to scratch. You should not go on scratching the word till it becomes a black patch or a blue patch. Just look at this sample in front of you on the screen. Uh, it just shows all those things highlighted which are not supposed to be seen. If handwriting is your personality, you are highlighting things that you don't want people to see. So avoid scratching things. It also shows that you are not accepting that you have made a mistake. So it is okay to make mistakes. You just have to move along. Let me speak about some things which are very well known to people who study some basic handwriting analysis. Uh, slant of the handwriting shows that 
uh, whether you can express your emotions well. So if your handwriting is leaning leftwards, it's difficult for you to express yourself. Uh, you find it uh, uncomfortable to talk to people in, and be in public. But you are very good when it uh, is uh, working with by yourself and working alone or staying alone. You, uh, when your handwriting is on the left side, uh, inclined towards left side, you prefer to solve problems by introspection and thinking by yourself and being by yourself. You become more and more independent in decision making because you don't like to get involved in people much. It doesn't mean that you are a loner or you uh, stay aloof. It's only that left slanting uh, handwriting people uh, prefer not to express their emotions and uh, keep their emotions by themselves. Whereas rightward uh, inclined handwriting shows that these people are very comfortable expressing themselves and sometimes expression is their requirement. It's very important for people with rightward uh, slanting handwriting to express themselves. Uh, if they don't get an opportunity to interact with people and don't get an opportunity to express themselves, they will find it suffocating and find it difficult uh, uh, to live. So, uh, rightward start people will always uh, want to solve problems by interacting with others. They are a little more impulsive and expressive than the leftward starting people. Uh, leftward starting people should not struggle uh, on their weakness of uh, being more expressive. Rather, they should accept that that is how they are and find ways of expressing themselves uh, to their close ones so that they will be more comfortable. Okay. So uh, we have last uh, 10 minutes. I'll just show you some things about baselines. Most of you students write on uh, uh, ruled papers. So if you write just above the ruled papers, uh, ruled lines, it shows that you enjoy freedom. Uh, this is like, if you look at the handwriting, it is slightly above the writing everywhere. If you write in between the lines, if your handwriting looks something like this, if you write in between the two lines, then you love freedom, you are an attention seeker and you enjoy being in public. Uh, writing very high above the line uh, shows that you are dreaming. So uh, the lines uh, on the paper are the rules and if you stick to the rules, if you write sticking to the rules, it shows that you stick to the rules and norms of the society, of your organization, of your college and your university. So it's a good... Uh, idea to write sticking to the line but uh, some people have variations and that is the meaning of that variation but some people uh, tend to cut the lines so now for teachers it's going to be helpful just look at the handwriting of students and you come to know who uh, uh, makes a lot of uh, nuisance in the class who is the person who uh, breaks rules so people who just cut the lines are the rule breakers uh, these people are rebellious and if you make a rule, they will break the rule. So, uh, these people tend to break rules. If they are there, they just break the rules for the sake of breaking it. They get a high by breaking rules. So, this is how it looks. And these people have difficulty in following the rules. They have a tendency to break the rules. They break rules if they are there. So, uh, in general, how handwriting analysis is useful is to know your own emotions. I can go on telling a lot of things about handwriting. This is just a tip of the iceberg. There are so many things uh, about handwriting that you can learn. And handwriting is nothing but your personality. So uh, there are so many things uh, that uh, you can learn about handwriting analysis. Uh, uh, Sumit, I feel that, uh, that that's all from my side. I have something to say at the end. But before that, uh, we can have the question and answers and discussion if you uh, have time for that. Yeah, sir. You can, sir. You show. We can take some questions, sir. Go ahead, sir. Please, sir. So, if anyone has any questions, you can unmute yourself and ask the questions, or you can write them in the chat. Uh, so, if you can take a call of uh, deciding who would uh, ask the questions. Uh, no, sir. It's your call, sir. Uh, as you wish, you can choose one question. You just give the answer, sir. Okay, uh, let me go through the chat first, if we have any questions there. Uh, what if the handwriting is straight? Somebody is asking. Okay, what if the handwriting is not on the left, not on the right, but it is straight? 
yes you are a very logical person if your handwriting is upright you are a logical person controlled and you express only if you feel that it is necessary to express okay a okay. lot of people are asking the same thing. how the size of handwriting determines personality simran is asking how handwriting size uh, what handwriting size uh, uh, telling us so if the large if the handwriting size is large it shows that uh, the person has a lot of leadership quality and if the uh, handwriting size is very small then it shows uh, that the person has good concentration ability and a person with very small minute handwriting is very good in research and analysis and quality control and uh, the person is also very good in investigation uh, the person is also good in forensics because they can investigate very well they are good in data analysis large writing people have natural tendency to be leaders they don't go in details uh, dr vikram is asking how criminal behavior is determined from handwriting analysis okay uh, so uh, we have a lot of things uh, seen in the handwriting which can show uh, the emotional uh, makeup of the person it can show the grudges it can show trauma it can show childhood abuse it can show sexual abuse in the writing it can also show a tendency to be physically harmful to others and uh, this these things can be seen uh, in the handwriting also uh, dr vikram we can see suicidal tendencies in the handwriting and we can see um self harming tendencies in the handwriting which can help us to understand uh, uh, criminal uh, tendencies uh, somebody is asking what about illegible handwriting of doctors uh, doctors have uh, 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 many doctors have good handwriting okay so uh, uh, doctors are the only people who write for you no engineer and architect writes for you and so you uh, catch hold of the doctors saying that your handwriting is not good okay so uh, many doctors have good handwriting but in, in general illegible handwriting shows that a person's uh, person is thinking uh, in ways which uh, people don't understand uh, because handwriting is a way of communication and if your handwriting is illegible you are not communicating so it's not the problem of the person who's reading but the problem of the person who's writing okay there's a lot of psychology in this but uh, we are not i'm uh, going to uh, go in uh, the details of this because time won't allow us uh, 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 somebody is requesting to do handwriting analysis here so it's not possible to do one to one analysis here uh, uh, but uh, we can do uh, i'm going to uh, give you something as a gift from my side uh, generally uh, yeah any question somebody wants to unmute and ask some questions please go ahead uh, i can take one last question before we close okay. how to analyze this uh, first edit from this guy and sir there is a one question okay. yes please how to analyze handwriting from this guy how to analyze first edit from this guy how to analyze okay. this guy's handwriting this guy's first yeah. handwriting okay so we get a lot of uh, cases like extortion letters uh, some uh, spoof letters some fake letters written by somebody uh, for uh, misguiding uh, someone like in cases where uh, there are there are uh, extortion letters or threat letters they are generally uh, they are generally written by the left hand or the person who try to write something not in the usual handwriting but please understand that this handwriting is also coming from the same person's mind okay he has he has devised something which is not a regular handwriting but in doing so he has revealed something which is a hidden personality trait of that person okay even in cases where we see lot of uh, wall writings we get lot of uh, investigation cases where people write on the walls they are anonymous people writing on the walls something uh, a using on the walls of the company or in public places writing something on the walls of the cars the writing is not it will never match so this is something for the forensic uh, document examiners the writing uh, that you see on in a in a anonymous letter or in a in a threat letter or uh, writing seen on the walls in crime uh, uh, crime scenes where the person is aware that he is going to be uh, followed or found out the writing will never match to the person's actual writing but it will still show you some personality traits 
uh, that will be his way of thinking. So we work in investigative graphology. There is uh, something that has come up after profiling. Uh, we have investigative psychology based on which we do uh, investigative graphology to understand the personality traits of a person, even if the, the person tries to disguise his handwriting. Okay, disguised handwriting is something that a person writes with an intention not to be found, but still gives you an idea of uh, the personality of the person because it is still coming from the same person's mind. It, it is going to be limited uh, uh, with the uh, possibilities that the person can have uh, uh, with his own mind. Uh, I hope I could answer your questions. Uh, yes, I'll sir. just give away. Yeah, I'll just give away something. Uh, I want to tell you something interesting that is happening nowadays. For This is mainly for uh, students. Now that we are under lockdown for a long time, the question that is going to be asked in interviews is not what, where you see yourself after five years, but the question is how did you upgrade yourself during the lockdown? And uh, if you don't want to be in that guilt of I didn't utilize my time in the lockdown, I can suggest you to uh, do this, uh, get this uh, skill of acquire the skill of handwriting and signature analysis. Uh, generally, my courses are available on graphologyonline.com. My website is graphologyonline.com. You can have courses there. These are the courses available there. Uh, presently, I have three courses there, and you can see they are uh, valued at uh, six thousand rupees there. Uh, three courses for six thousand rupees, but you can get them all. Uh, for being here in the webinar till the end, not for 5,000, certainly, uh, what, what do you expect? 50% discount? Something more than that? More than this too? Okay, so uh, this is being offered to you for being in the webinar. Uh, you can do this three courses of 6,000 rupees just for 600. What you need to do is just write your name, your department, college, uh, and uh, your phone number and email address to this email ID contact at cpag.in and we will give you share a code with you where you can get uh, this uh, course just for 600 rupees which is of the value of 6000 rupees so thank you so much uh, for inviting me here I especially thank uh, my colleagues Krishna and uh, Sumit for uh, uh, recommending me and I once again Thank uh, Dr. Durai, Dr. Uh, Lyon, Dr. K. Retinan, Dr. P. Bharat, uh, Guru Swami, and Professor Yu Natarajan, and of course your academic uh, coordinator, Dr. N. Makarandeyan, uh, Markandeyan, for uh, having me here for the uh, uh, webinar in your conference. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, sir, for your valuable information. And so now we are end of the session. Here is an important announcement. Those who have registered for this webinar, they will get the certificates on the register mail ID within one week time duration after submitting your feedback form. You will get your feedback form link with 24 hours time. Before delivering vote of thanks, I request our principal, Dr. P. Balguru Swami Sir, Jitian Arts College. You can continue, sir, Pardon Swamas, to express the thoughts about today's session. I am hand over the mic to the principal, sir. Right, right. So, uh, praise Sydney, sir. Sir, Mr. Praise Sydney, sir. Sir, Namaste. Sir? Yes, sir, I'm there. Ah, sir, Namaskar. Namaskar. I am, I am the principal of this prestigious institution. Thank you for having me, sir. Thank you so much. Ah, Mr. Mr. Krishna and uh, Sumit uh, already told uh, uh, many good things about you, sir. Both of them are doing Marvelous job as far as this webinar is concerned. I know very well about your personality and uh, your scholarship through these uh, two gentlemen, sir. Yesterday, I spoke with them and I asked uh, the 
validity of this title uh, either it is scientifically proved this graphology is scientifically proved or not both of them have explained about the scientific authenticity of your uh, lecture sir we are very happy uh, both of them have organized four uh, seminars among the four one is from the famous scotland we know all know that scotland yard they have chosen a resource person from scotland yard this is the last session uh, very useful one uh, how the handwriting will help us for the promotion and other attitudes of a individual gentleman and uh, uh, how can we assess one's personality through this graphology all these ideas have given elaborately by you on behalf of our prestigious management especially our correspondent line dr k rethinam on behalf of our young and energetic director mr durai rethinam and my own behalf and on behalf of our institution on behalf of the all staff members of our college uh, we extend our whole hearted thank and uh, appreciation and congratulations to you sir thank you sir and in this auspicious junction i express my sincere gratitude appreciation and congratulation to these two gentlemen of our forensic science department mr krishna and mr sumit and also i thank the participants uh, for their cooperation thank you one and all thank you very much sir thank you sir thank you hello dear participants there is a small important announcement now i ask mr krishna sonone head and organized secretary department of forensic science to deliver the vote of thanks hello everyone i krishna sonone head department of forensic science and organizing secretary for this international webinar series on forensic science for society today i am here to deliver the vote of thanks before starting a vote of thanks i will tell you the highlights about this international webinar series we conducted four webinars focusing on various areas of forensic science we feel proud to say that we have got more than 5000 participants from all over the world uh, and they are benefited through this session which includes the students academician industrialist lawyers and police professionals as it was an international webinar series we got the participants from more than 12 countries thank you so much for this overwhelming response and being the active participant in this webinar series on behalf of department of forensic science and whole gtn family i wish you a very happy and safe future ahead to know about our academic courses and admission please visit at gtnarts.org on google and you can follow us through various social media uh, platform like facebook instagram twitter for future updates you can also drop your comments and feedbacks about us at gtn4n62k19@gmail.com so gratitude is the most exquisite form of courtesy i expressing my sincere gratitude towards today's resource person doc mr parish chitni sir thank you so much sir for your valuable information it was the best use of this time uh, during this lockdown i would like to propose my hearty thanks and gratitude to all the participants of today's webinar thank you for your interest i would like to express our profound gratitude towards our beloved secretary and correspondent line dr k rethinam sir uh, dr p uh, dr p walaguru swami principal sir vice principal sir dr uh, professor u natarajan sir academic director sir uh, dr n markendal sir and deans of various affairs heads of all the departments and each member of administration and management of gtn arts college dindikal for their valuable support and guidance i am also thankful to our technical team for their valuable efforts i also thankful to all my colleague members of gtn institution 
for their valuable assistance. Thank you everyone for making this international webinar series on forensic science for society as a success, successful event. Stay home, stay safe. Thank you.